Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about another case of CTO-PCI of the RCA. This time, uh, things uh, went a little bit less smoothly and in eventually involving uh, the use of snaring techniques. The uh, patient is a 65-year-old woman uh, with diabetes, high blood pressure, and coronary disease. She is a status post PCI of the circumflex and cabbage uh, several years ago. She had a lima to the LED, a vein graft to the OM, and a vein graft to the PDA. Ten months ago, uh, she started having a progressively worse uh, exertional dyspnea and angina. She got to the point that uh, walking up one flight of stairs uh, would trigger angina. She underwent uh, nuclear stress testing, uh, which showed a large area of severe inferior ischemia. Echo uh, showed EF of 45%, and there was uh, inferior hypokinesis. She then had a calf uh, that showed a CTO of the RCA and an occluded vein graft to the PDA. The other grafts were patent, and the circumflex stent uh, was also patent. So her cardiologist uh, attempted to treat her medically, uh, but after several months of escalating anti-anginal medications, she still had significant uh, persistent angina. So three months ago, um, she underwent the attempted PCI of the RCACTO uh, using an anti rate approach, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the CTO uh, could not be uh, successfully crossed. So she was then referred to us uh, for another attempt at RCACTO PCI. So as with uh, most CTO interventions, uh, we did simultaneous injections in both the anti-grade direction uh, via the RCA and also in the retrograde direction uh, via the left main. So here we see a severely diseased RCA system uh, with a very long CTO. Uh, the distal RCA uh, did not reconstitute very well even with dual injections. The uh, proximal cap of the CTO uh, was uh, somewhat ambiguous and uh, there was no significant calcification in the RCA and also no obvious uh, tortuosity. In the uh, contralateral view, uh, we see that there are several uh, reasonable uh, septal and interventional collaterals uh, that could be used. Uh, in this case, the JCTO score is two, uh, reflecting a prior attempt at the CTO and the length of the lesion. This predicted that uh, it would be a challenging lesion to cross, uh, not uh, particularly surprising. However, uh, the progress CTO score was just one, uh, re just reflecting a proximal cap uh, ambiguity. Uh, this predicted a high likelihood of success uh, if using hybrid uh, CTO techniques. So our plan was to first start out with uh, anti-grade wire escalation and then quickly switch over to retrograde if that failed. Um, even for re-attempts, uh, we uh, always start uh, with anti-grade uh, in nearly all CTO-PCI cases, since you never know uh, if you might get lucky and, and cross. Uh, we thought in this case that the anti-grade dissection reentry was not particularly a good option uh, due to the uh, poor uh, distal reentry target. So we went ahead and got to work. Uh, we used uh, dual eight French guides and started with a turnpike LP microcatheter and a fielder XT wire on the off chance that there might be a microchannel. Uh, the fielder XT unfortunately made absolutely no progress. So we then switched over to a pilot 200 wire, uh, which progressed fairly quickly uh, all the way uh, to the mid RCA. However, we did a retrograde injection here uh, that showed that the, the wire had dissected and that it was subintimal and unfortunately was also located uh, quite far outside uh, of the uh, lumen. So we uh, left the uh, pilot 200 wire in place uh, for a reverse cart uh, later on. Uh, we switched over to retrograde. Uh, we engaged the septal branch using a pro water wire we then exchanged it to a, a Sion wire uh, for a septal surfing uh, via a, a turnpike LP microcatheter. Uh, we uh, quickly negotiated the Sion to the posterior wall, but it could not be advanced into the distal RCA. Uh, we did a, a retrograde injection and really uh, couldn't tell uh, where the end of the Sion wire was. We uh, tracked down a, a different collateral, uh, but still could not advance the Sion to the distal RCA. Uh, 
So initially thinking that maybe it was a support issue, uh, we advanced the uh, Turnpike LP down and switched the Sion to a Pilot 200, a little bit heavier gauge wire. But still, we were uh, making uh, no progress. We did another contrast injection, and still it was unclear whether there was a connection between where we were and uh, the uh, distal RCA. So we switched out to the Sion again, tried other collaterals, and this kept on going for several more times uh, without much progress. And occasionally, uh, like here, we weren't, uh, uh, we couldn't be uh, completely sure uh, whether we had actually exited uh, the blood vessel. Finally, we tried a different septal and success. Uh, the Sion at this point sailed right through to the mid RCA and the uh, turnpike LP microcatheter followed fairly easily uh, with just a little bit of torquing to get it to turn into the PDA from the septal collateral. We got the turnpike LP all the way uh, to the mid RCA as well and used, uh, uh, used it to switch uh, the Sion wire out uh, to a uh, Pilot 200. The uh, retrograde Pilot 200 wire uh, advanced uh, easily uh, more proximally uh, but we could easily tell uh, that it had dissected as well and was also subintimal uh, from the way it was wrapping around uh, the vessel. So we advanced the uh, retrograde pilot 200 wire to our uh, intended uh, reentry point uh, in the proximal RCA and inflated a 3.0 millimeter balloon over the anti-grade wire uh, to uh, perform a reverse cart. But after the uh, reverse cart inflation, uh, we still could not get the Pilot 200 wire to enter the anti-grade guide. Uh, it kept on uh, tracking into a side branch. Uh, we did reverse cart again uh, with a larger 3.5 millimeter balloon and tried again, uh, but still uh, without, uh, without success. So our plan at this point uh, was to uh, move to a guy liner reverse cart technique where a, a guy liner is advanced anti-grade uh, into a smaller part of the vessel uh, to make it easier to catch the uh, retrograde guide wire. But as the uh, circulator was uh, out getting the guy liner, uh, we did one more try with the retrograde pilot 200 wire and this time the wire took a slightly different path and ended up uh, curled up somewhere and bouncing around. Um, wasn't really sure where it was uh, until we switched over to the contralateral view where uh, it became clear that the tip of the retrograde pilot 200 wire was actually bouncing on top of the aortic valve. So the retrograde wire had exited the RCA and entered the aorta. So I suppose that's pretty good but how do we now get the wire back into the anti-grade guide? So a nice option here is to snare it out. Um, so some uh, tips um, uh, for snaring uh, could be useful here. So first, uh, if possible, uh, advance your retrograde microcatheter into the aorta. Uh, this can help stabilize the retrograde wire and make it easier to snare. Next, ideally, you'd like to snare the wire that you are actually going to externalize. So exchange your retrograde wire to an RG3 or an, R or, um, an R350 externalization wire uh, before snaring. Um, snaring will often be easier if the vessel caliber is small. So sometimes it is actually useful uh, to advance your retrograde wire or the externalization wire all the way up into the brachiocephalic artery and attempt to snare there. The brachiocephalic artery is a, uh, a lower diameter uh, than, uh, than the aorta. Next, uh, using a GR4 guide rather than an AL guide will often make snaring easier. The GR4 uh, is going to be a lot more maneuverable than the AL guide, especially if you're trying to get it up into the brachiocephalic artery. Uh, use larger uh, multi-loop snares such as the 18 to 30 millimeter or the 27 to 45 millimeter EN snares. Uh, they are larger size, uh, make catching the wire uh, a lot easier. And if at all possible, try to catch the floppy tip of the wire. Uh, they are much uh, less likely to bend and snap uh, in the snare. And finally, always remember uh, to disengage the retrograde guide uh, to uh, prevent injury uh, to the donor vessel, in this case, the left main.
So uh, for us, uh, well, we uh, could not advance the Turnpike LP uh, into the aorta. So we actually had to snare uh, the retrograde pilot 200 wire itself uh, rather than an uh, externalization wire. But uh, we were actually quite easily able to snare the wire uh, in the ascending aorta using an 18 uh, to 30 millimeter EN snare uh, within an 8 French uh, JR4 guide. Uh, with the uh, Pilot 200 wire now held in place in the integrate guide by the snare, uh, we were able to advance the Turnpike LP microcatheter from the RCA uh, into the integrate guide. So uh, at this point, we're actually almost home free. All we have to do now is to exchange the Pilot 200 wire to a long RJ3 wire for externalization, and then just lay down a couple of stents, uh, and we're done. But at this point, uh, disaster struck. As we were advancing the RJ3 wire through the guide uh, via the Turnpike LP, uh, the anti-grade guide kicked back and everything fell out. The RJ3 wire and the Turnpike LP uh, both ended up back out in the aorta. Uh, we had to uh, re-snare. Um, we hadn't taken the time to uh, trap the uh, Turnpike LP in place in the anti-grade guide. Uh, so, uh, lesson learned. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we were able to successfully resnare and finally externalize uh, the RG3 wire. Uh, PCI then uh, proceeded uneventfully over the RG3. Uh, our our 8 French JR4 engagement was still quite poor, uh, so we had to use a 6 French guideliner uh, to do the PCI. Now remember that the amount of force that can be generated across the heart uh, with uh, tension across an externalized wire can be quite significant, and that can cause a substantial amount of uh, injury. So note again that we retracted the retrograde guide back into the aorta here uh, to uh, protect uh, the donor vessel, the left main. Um, here uh, is the uh, distal RCA stent uh, being positioned. And also here note that the turnpike LP was pulled back to allow stenting, uh, but was purposely left across the septal uh, to prevent septal injury uh, from a cheese slicing effect uh, with the externalized uh, wire. Uh, here the guideliner was pulled back and uh, the uh, proximal uh, RCA stent was being deployed here. And uh, we obtain a reasonable result after three stents were placed uh, from the uh, proximal to distal RCA. Um, we always inject the uh, donor vessel to confirm no injury. In this case, the left main and LED were fine, and the, uh, the septals uh, were fine as well. And uh, here's the final angiographic result, and it was quite good. Uh, the uh, patient did very well. Um, her uh, anti-anginal medications were stopped, and uh, one year later, uh, she uh, remained completely free of angina. Okay, some uh, take-home messages. Uh, first, uh, before all CTO PCIs, Always analyze the angiogram carefully and plan your strategy ahead of time. CTO PCIs are difficult and can be full of surprises. Uh, so it is always helpful to have well-defined plans and uh, contingencies in your head uh, before getting started. Um, during the case, uh, be flexible in uh, quickly switching uh, bef between different CTO PCI strategies uh, if one isn't working. Uh, this is the core principle of the so-called hybrid algorithm. In retrograde cases, remember that snaring is a nice option if the anti-grade guide cannot be directly wired with your retrograde wire. And if you are going to snare, uh, we went over some tips in this case uh, that can be useful. Uh, number one, uh, advance uh, your microcatheter into the aorta if possible. Number two, uh, you always want to try to snare the wire you're going to externalize. So exchange your retrograde wire to an externalization wire uh, before snaring. Number three, advance your wire uh, into the brachiocephalic artery if possible. Uh, the small diameter there will make it easier to snare. Number four, uh, use a GR4 guide. It's going to be uh, a little bit more maneuverable uh, than something like an AL. Number five, uh, remember to disengage your retrograde guide uh, during the snaring process. Um, this will prevent injury uh, to the uh, donor vessel.
Number six, uh, use uh, multi-loop snares. Uh, I like these snares because uh, their larger size will make it easier to uh, catch uh, the wire. And finally, number seven, uh, try to catch the floppy tip of the wire. Uh, this is uh, likely, uh, this is less likely to kink and snap uh, in the snare. Thank you for watching.